everyone I'm back with another share um, this one actually is going to be a process video which is why the video is so long so I figured I would show you what I made and then if you want to continue watching how I did this um, then you can keep on watching or you can just click out okay so I made another divider here for my Diana Markham recipe book you guys have seen the cover already um, let me mention that all my videos for this book are going to be in a playlist on my youtube channel so i did create a playlist i'm going to try and get it posted on my actual page so you can see the playlist right away or you can just go over to the playlist tab on my channel and you should see this playlist um it's uh pretty easy to find hopefully so anyway um this is the cover of my book, and this is the new divider that I added in between my soups section and my sweets section. So this is the fourth one. Well, this is the fourth divider I've made, but it's the third page in the book right now because I don't have any recipes actually in the book yet. So, um, which I need to get, you know, started on. So here is the divider that I finished up. I didn't embellish too much because I actually wanted to have, you know, some other things in here. So um, this banner here, and there's one on the back side. Those are from the, everything is from the barbecue collection, I believe, in terms of the fruits and the banner. Um, I used their shape and sprinkle stickers their enamel stickers the fruit from that as well as the um icon stickers that i had as well they had some fruit in there too there's a little bit a few more um, which i may just um not use for the the divider page i might put it actually on my um what do you call it my actual uh, recipe pages so that's the other thing that i use there as well as these um letters that I had used on my previous card for recipes. These are from, these are thickers from American Crafts and it is called Goodness. That's the name and I don't know if you can find these anymore, but they're the limeade color and they work perfectly for the color that I chose for the salad. The salad itself is, um, or the recipe is for a fruit salad that she has out and that was the first in the monthly um, subscription from Adorn It. Um, so, that's the reason why I wanted to add a salad section, but I also have another stamp of Diana's. This is a previously released stamp that she did with a different company. Um, and I have the apple salad recipe stamp. So you can see kind of the difference in the sizes of the old and the new stamp side by side. Um, so I will probably also include this in this section since I have a section for it now. Um, and then any others that I might come across in the future um, or my own recipes that I might want to include in here. You never know. Um, so these are the two that'll be in this section here. I haven't yet put them in there, but you can see the, the size difference. So what I'll be doing is um, making a page for this particular, not this particular one, because this one goes in my card, but I'll make another, uh, I'll color up another um, image of this fruit salad and insert it as a page in my book. Um, so that's yet to come. I don't have any of my own colored images in here yet, um, but I wanted to show you kind of how that would look. It would have its own page and it would be the star of the page. So that's it for now. Keep watching if you're interested in seeing how I constructed this and thanks for watching. Hey everyone, I'm back with another update from my recipe journal. So I told you guys, I think in my previous uh, video when I was sharing my divider tabs that uh, I probably was going to add one more tab in here for salad. So I'm going to actually film making that new divider tab. Or, sorry, the new divider. Um, so I've picked out my paper and I've chosen this green um, Petite Prince um, Limeade Gingham lim Linen. So this is um, one of the coordinating papers for one of the collections I don't know which one because I bought so many collections that I knew that they would all coordinate so um this is limeade 53 limeade gingham linen so it's got like a dark gr dark green and a lighter green together and it coordinates with some of the nice fruity um pattern paper 
This is from the Barbecue collection. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. Both of these are actually. And I even have these little um, banners to decorate with. Of two of them. I don't know if I'll use them, but I set them aside so that um, I could decorate my page. And also this little sticker sheet, which has lots of different fruits. Because one of the salads, uh, salad recipes, is a fruit salad. Um, but I also have Diana Markham's original stamp for apple salad. And it's a giant apple with the recipe inside of it. I don't know if you've seen it, but I have that one as well. So I figured... I don't know if I'll actually end up with a recipe that a recipe for a salad that's made with veggies, you know, like a traditional salad, um, not a fruit salad. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to use this 12 by 12 sheet to create the divider tab, just like this one was done, where you have the two different sides of the pattern paper showing, um, because all it is is a score mark of taking this up. So I need to cut my paper down. Um, really it's more that I have to cut the, the little solvage strip off and then another inch off the bottom because um, my, my fold here, or my score line, I'm going to need to score it here at the bottom to make it fold up. And then I also have to um, score this extra inch piece of paper. So I'm going to do that um, off camera and then I'll come back and show you. Okay. Be right back. All right. I've done some cutting. So let me show you first. Okay. First of all, these are the measurements for my book. So if you are doing a book as well and your measurements are different, you would have different, of course, um, score lines and uh, measurements for your book. Right. Okay. So I'm going to put this off to the side so you can actually see this. So what I have is my piece of paper that was 12 by 12. I cut that selvage edge off. Okay. So I cut the strip off so that it was 12 by 12. And then I cut another inch of the paper off. So this is an inch um, wide piece of paper from one of the sides. All right. So um, I then cut... Um, a seven and a half inch, or actually it's probably just shy of seven and a half inches. Um, and this is for that extra length that I'm going to need for my binding. Okay. So yeah, just shy of seven and a half. Um, and that's because I need to make it just slightly shorter than the page itself. So the other thing is I want it to have a pocket. So you can see this page has a pocket in it on the front and the back. And that pocket is three and a half inches deep. Okay. So what you want to do is on, on the 11 inch side, right? This is got to be 11 inches. Hold on. Let me measure it to make sure. Yeah. This is the 11 inches in height. You want to score three inch, well, you want to decide which paper that is going to show, is going to show as the pocket. And this is the, the side I want to have as the pocket, right? So when I score it, I'm going to score it on this side of the piece of paper, three and a half inches up from the bottom. Okay. So here's my huge scoreboard. This is a Stampin' Up. This is an old Stampin' Up scoreboard, um, that I have. I haven't, I have a, um, what do you call it? Uh, Martha Stewart one. But I like this one because it has these little things that you can mark. And you can see I have three and a half inches marked already. Because this is what I was using to make the other ones. So if I just put my piece of paper up against that, butt it up against the corner there, the upper left corner. And then I draw my scoring tool at three and a half. And by the way, it has a place to store your scoring tool at the bottom. See it right there? Um, I bought this second hand from somebody. So actually I should have done it on the other side because that is not the way the fold is going to go. Yes, it does matter. So you want to score it properly. Okay. Is that right? Yes. When you score it on the right, on the correct side, the little divot is the part that's going to go on the inside. So I will 
folded upwards like this. See that? It's folded upwards. Okay, so that's one score line. And the other score line I need to make is for the crease in the middle. Okay, so because my um, page is basically made from 112 by 12, I needed to score it in the middle, which is six inches in. So I'm going to turn the paper. I wasn't prepared to do this <laughs> on camera, but... I'm going to turn the paper. Well, I'm not going to turn the paper. I already have it in the correct direction. And I'm going to score it at six inches, which is right here on this point. It's already marked for me. Um, and this is going to be on the outside. So this is going to be showing. So this is how it would look. And the score line is going to be at six inches so that when I fold it in half, it's going to fold like that. This paper is going to fold like that. Okay. So... Let me make sure I scored at the right spot. Okay. So now it would score like, it would fold like that. Okay. Is this how I did it? I think this is how I did it. All right. So one of the things that, um, you'll notice that I did is when I made these pages, the folded piece of paper is actually not um, folded here. It's cut right here, right? It's also not folded here. Okay. So there's actually um, a gusset right here. If you can believe me. I did put a gusset in here. I think that's how I did these. So I did cut it up this little fold so that when you hold it backwards, there's no tension along this line. So I hope that makes sense. I'm just going to get my scissors here. I'm going to cut it down that strip, down that um, score line. Okay, so now when you fold it, there's no tension here at the center of the page. Okay, because otherwise it'll be too, it'll be too tight and that, that could cause the paper to start to tear or show some signs of wear. So you don't want that. Okay. The other thing that um, I have to do is to make that extra little piece that fits here, and that is what goes along the spine. And you can decide um, if you want the fold to be towards the inside of your book or you want this piece to be towards the inside of your book. It's up to you how you want to do it. And I actually have done it, I think I did it different ways both times. At least that's how it seems to me. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to have this fold be on the outside of my book. And then this fold will be on the inside. And you won't see this because my my little spine piece, which is this, this piece here, it's going to be um, fitted to this. Okay. And you can decide if you want to use, because this is the scrap piece, rather than trying to cut another piece of paper. You know, I'm going to actually use the scrap piece. And I think... I'm going to use it so that this is on the outside. So I'm going to put a score line in the middle of it. So just down the middle because it's an inch, it's an inch wide. I just need to do it at a half an inch. And it's already marked on my board. You see that point right there? It's already marked on my board, so I don't have to do that. This might be easy for you guys, like, you know, if you've done journals before, this is probably easy for you guys to to really um, do yourself. I'm just showing it to you because some folks have never done this kind of thing. And so for them to see it, it's probably a good thing. Okay. 
So now I've scored it in half and I've folded it and I'm just gonna give it a good crease with my bone folder. Okay, so here's the deal. This piece is gonna fit, before you fold down, before you um, uh, adhere anything on your pockets, I want it to be on the inside, right? I want it to be the extra binding uh, width for my page so that I'm going to actually glue it like that, right? That's how it's going to fit. So I'm going to use some score tape, double-sided sticky tape on my book. And I'm actually, I need to punch this. So the fold should be on the, towards the inside. Uh, I'm sorry. The fold should be what's punched. Okay. So here's my book again. What I have punched for my binding is the fold. So this is the part that's actually going to get those little punches in it. And this is the part that's going to be connected to the book. So when you put it in your punch, that's, that's the direction you want to put it in. So let me do that. I'm going to bring my punch up here. And I know this is taking a long time, but you guys, if you're not interested, you can always move on. Okay. Here's my punch. It's unlocked. That's why it's at this height. And, um, I have mine in, in the, I think it's in the correct position. Hopefully I didn't move it. No, I'm going to center mine. Um, you can see where the paper is and you see that last hole at the top and the bottom. I'm just going to center it so that it's, it's equal on both sides. And there's just a little bit hanging out and I pushed it all the way to the back of the punch. You see that? Because it's such a thin strip of paper, I have to hold my finger in there and my, it won't get, you know, it won't get smashed or anything like that because I'm going to punch it. But, um, I'm, I'm holding it in place with my finger and it's equidistant on both sides. So I'm just going to punch it and you see those little pieces now. Okay. So I don't need the punch anymore. Put it back down off the desk. Now what I do is I take this and I put my one eighth inch um, double sided tape, once I find the end, I put it along each of the edges because that's what's going to stick to my other piece. So I put it on both sides because it needs to adhere to both sides of the folded page. And then I put some along the inside too, towards the crease, not on the crease, but towards the crease. And, um, you don't have to go all the way down. I just like to put it here and there so that there's good, um, support for that paper. Okay. Now it's giving me trouble. Trouble. I'm just putting it in some of the spots. And again, you don't want it to show outside of the, um, you know, where the holes are. Okay. My finger's sticking to it. So I'm, this is my last piece. I like this better than the red line because you can just tear it. I, I don't like to have to use my scissors if I don't have to pull them out. All right. Okay, so that is the spine. And you're probably wondering, well, how do you get it? How do you know where it's supposed to go? Okay, the beauty of this book, again, because I can take the pages out, I'm going to take the red one out, the red divider. Sorry for soups. So I can use it as my template. Okay because I want the positioning to be the same, right? So I've just taken that red divider out and I can overlay it, right? So the edge of the, the edge of the, I'm gonna use the flaps out like this. 
the edge of the red piece of paper is where I want this to be butted up against. And I can clip them together. Hold on. That'll make it easier. Let me clip them together so that they're in the same spot. These are just some bulldog clips that I have, bull nose clips. Okay, so now I know that they're lined up and you see that little red piece hanging out there? That's where I want this one to line up with, right? So I want this to be the exact same distance away and then it will give me a page that's exactly like the one that's gonna be in front of it. So I'm gonna take the tape off And I think I did this the last time. Before I take, before I attach this, I need to add adhesive inside the, the page. So before I attach it, I need to add adhesive in here. Otherwise you'll have a pocket. And you can do that. You can, if you wanna make a pocket, you can do that, right? Just punch a little half circle here and you can have a pocket at the top, but that's not what I want. So I'm gonna use some regular I think this is half inch tape and just run it along the inside of my page. Okay, my, my stuff is in the way and I know you can't see this. I'm just putting down adhesive in between the two scored halves. Oh, I shouldn't have done it that way. off a piece and just stick it in there. Because I don't want a pocket in the middle. I, I can't make this book too bulky. Okay. I gotta cut that off. My clip is in the way. So... All right. Okay. <sighs> now I can just take that adhesive piece off. That can stick down to the bottom because, of course, if you do the side first, then you can't get to the bottom. And then the side. Okay, so now these two sides are actually stuck together. Okay. Let me just check to make sure my position is still the same. And it is. And now I can adhere the little scored half page here. So, all right. So all I do is I line it up so that that score line and the page are going, you know, they're the same height and distance. And I can tell that's not right. I'm not pushing down on the page yet because I don't want it to stick together, so. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way or my, hip or my arms, but. I think I did this a little differently the last time, but it'll turn out almost exactly the same way. Okay, so then you can just fold it over and hopefully your pages are the same size. It's a little bit shorter, which is okay. I think it'll be fine. Okay, now I can take this apart, put that back in the book. Um, you you kind of just want them generally the same width, right? You want your divider tabs to be the same width, is what I'm saying. Um, okay. All right, so now I have to make the little pockets. And all I do with that is just run some tape up the sides here. And I use the, again, I use the 1 8 inch tape. And you can use whatever you want, but make sure it's good, you know, good quality. 
because you don't want this to fall apart on you. Okay, pull the tape off, pull the tape off. I don't have something there. I had a problem earlier with the adhesive. Okay, I can, then I can just, now you, you could decide if you want to cut it like, again, because it is a pocket, you can cut like a little circle out of it. I didn't even bother doing that. Uh, I just was not interested in doing that. So give it a good press. Now that's a pocket. So you'll see. I can stick something in there and it won't come out, right? And these pockets are wide enough for my recipe cards. That's part of the reason why my book is the way it is, so that I can fit my recipe um, cards in there. Um, let me do this side. Now I'm going to um, pause right here because I need to... Uh, figure out what to use as my letters for my tab um, to, to spell out salads because I, I didn't do that yet I don't know if I I know I have coordinating letters but I just have to find some that match so I'm gonna pause the video right here and I'll be right back okay hey guys so I'm back I found these letters that I still had out from my my faux recipe book card um, I'm hoping that I can fit five letters across here. And these are the thickers um, from American Crafts in a limeade color. So they're perfect color for this green cardstock I chose, which was not planned at all. I did not plan that. Um, so I'm going to use these to sort of place them um, first before I stick them down. I'm I'm going to see if I can fit them all because if I can't, there's no point in doing this, right? So there's the S. And I'm going to use uh, the sort of shade, different shades. I'm not going to use them all in one color because I think it'll be more fun to do this. So I'm just going to go down the spectrum of colors that they have for these, these letters. Oh, that's going to be tight. S A O. I don't know if that's going to fit. This is the same problem I had with the other, with one of the other colors or one of the other tabs I had, where the letters were kind of like too big. I think I might have to come up with a spacing. yeah okay there's the L I need another A which is in the same okay and then I need a D it's five letters so it's it's actually kind of nice that it works out that way salad okay so here is the deal I'm gonna need to stack them on top of each other if I want to do this so can you see that I'm going to come in some so you can see it. So I need to basically work with it so that the S and the D are all the way to the edge of the tab. Thank God I used big tabs. If I didn't do that, then I would be out of luck here. Okay. I should be gluing this, by the way. I don't know if this is going to work out. Is that stuck down yet? No. I'm going to glue it because the adhesive on these letters may not be as, as long-lasting as I'd like it to be. So I'm going to glue them. So that's just the other side of my tab. Just ignore that. The... Um, Steel rule die cut them all the way through. 
because it's a steel roll die for this tab and so yeah I'm going to creatively place these so that the A's are on top there's two A's so it's sort of symmetrical in a way kind of works out fine and because the L will be in the middle it will prop it up okay so I'm gonna just put the L sort of in the center of the S and the D and hopefully you'll be able to see it still I hope this looks nice when I'm done see this is just me sort of working it I don't know that it's going to work but this is how I'm gonna do it if it doesn't look nice and I can just do it again with something else but this is what I'm coming up with so the two A's are actually the same color you can't see them they're off camera see they're the same color so this works out well so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put glue on the A um, right where it's going to touch the two letters the S and the L okay um, because it's not actually going to touch the paper the tab itself it's only going to be adhered to the S and the L all right is that enough glue does that make sense what I'm doing it's it's actually adhered to the top of the S and the L on its two legs so it's a little popped up and I'm going to do the same thing with the other A the L and the D are going to hold the A up now this is a little bit weird because the L that little piece of the L right there is what is going to be glued so I just want to make sure there's some adhesive down there to hold that in place okay so the A again is going to be between the, the A and the D I like using tweezers for this type of thing because you know it helps me sort of place it exactly where I want it to be so there we go I just need to hold it down a little bit in place it's a little crooked you'll see it in a second because I'm gonna lift my hand up okay can you see that it says salad the L kind of looks weird uh, I don't know I, I I mean maybe I should have used the dark L one moment please why wait for the glue to dry okay this is this okay kind of ripped my paper a little bit because I glued it down so all right let's try this instead that way you can see the L really good okay so the, those are all the same color and I'm going to use some more glue because it kind of got removed when I took them off okay And because my tabs don't stick over the end of the book, they're going to be protected by the book itself. I don't need this L anymore. It's going to keep sticking to me. I'll hold it up closer to the camera once I'm done. All right.
kind of works, sorta. All right, let me close my glue and then I'll bring that closer to the camera. Okay, so this is one side of the tab. Now there is a little bit of adhesive on this letter L. There we go. Salad. Can you see the word salad? And you can see the A's don't touch the paper at the top because they're connected to the S and the L and the D. All right, so that's one side of my tab. I have another side right here. I'm going to use my 1 8 inch score tape again to stick both sides together. So I'm going to run some along the bottom. This is the inside of the tab that you're never going to see. Well, I hope you never see it. Then I have to do it to the other side. Just be careful. I don't mess up what I did. Okay. All right, so let me come back out again so that you can see me putting together the tab on the page. Okay, so over there. Okay, so my salad section is going right after my soup section. And the reason I'm going to show it to you like this is because as the, you want to align it as the pages in the book. Okay, so I'm going to actually put this in my book. And hopefully I did this correctly. <laughs> All right. Hopefully I did this correctly. So now it's sitting down in the book, right? You can see that last tab right here. And I have another page in front of it. And that tab is right here. So what I want to do is space it so that it's equally distant. You know, it's equally spaced on this, on the new tab. So, okay. It's probably easier if I do this one because it has nothing on it um, first. And then do the other, um, the front piece. Because then I can just stick it down. I'll know the placement once that's in once this tab is stuck down. So let me see. I'm gonna try and get in for you. I'm sorry going in and out, but I think you can see it better if I do it this way. Okay, so I have my um, finger behind the green page. I hope you can see that. Um, and I want them spaced, you know, about the same between the two tabs there. So I'm looking at it from the side. Not looking into the camera at all. I'm looking at the side. And just to see how, how much each one overlaps. And so I want to see the height and everything. I think I just hit it with my head too. The camera that is. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, so, yeah, that's good enough. So my tab, this is the reverse side that you're not going to see. Um, you see how it's just shy of the edge of the book? That's what I want. I don't want them, I don't want it hanging out like that. Okay, and so all I have to do is now is just remove this adhesive on the inside here and stick it down, matching it up to the back. Right? And that's the reason why I have three strips of adhesive. This is to stick to the actual page. This is to stick to that tab or a portion of the tab. And then this is at the top. So it's nice and sturdy. So I'm going to lift this a little bit because it's easier for me to position it when I do it like that. And 
and there we go. So that is my salad tab. And again, I have some of these little embellishments that I was going to put on here. Um, I'm going to, to do that off camera just because this video is too long and then I'll come back and share the whole page, okay? Be right back. <laughs> 